Next, we look into the DNS or domain name system. So let's look into the background on the DNS, okay? So when you enter a domain name in the browser to access the website, the domain name is resolved to the IP. Example here, if let's say you type that www.huawei.com, behind it, they basically need to translate into IP address. So for example, it can be uh, example only. So 172.60.23.40. Uh, for example so this is just an example so when you want to do this type of uh, translation from domain name to IP you have to use what we call the DNS so the browser actually communicates with the IP address they don't communicate with the domain name so the protocol used to resolve the domain name is called DNS domain name system each node on the network has a unique IP okay but if I ask you to remember 10 IP can you remember all these 10 IP it's difficult right but instead of 10 IP, I ask you to remember 10 domain name. Would it be much easier? Of course, it will be much easier because we remember a name easier than the number. So that's why when the computer to computer communicate, they are using IP. But for us, we remember by name. So that's why you can see some domain names are very expensive. We need to use the IP to communicate. That's how the computer works, but we can remember name better. So that is where the DNS come in. So in this example, we have this uh, Huawei.com, which is translated into IP address. So when you type the URL called www.huawei.com is translated into IP and the browser is going to look for the IP address and the, you will get communicate. So let's look into the DNS component. So first we need to uh, understand two components. First one is called domain name. A domain name is a sequence of character to identify the host. In most cases, the URL enter in the browser when you visit a website is the domain name. Then we also have a DNS server. DNS server is, as its name suggests, is a server that maintain the mapping between domain name and the IP address corresponding to the DNS resolver. So in this example, you can see that the client, which is on the left, is going to send a query. So this is a query is sent, and the query is in the UTP. The port normally they are used is port 53. Then the DNS is going to check on their database. Okay, so these are the data. Is. 
So once they found the IP address, it's going to reply back to the client again this is in UDP so we have then the DNS request and DNS respond so the request is my client The response is by DNS server. Now next we look into the domain name format. The domain name is in the format of host, then there's a dot, then second uh, level domain, then dot, then we have a top level domain, then dot, then there's a domain on the root so the root is actually represented by the dot so this is the root of all the dns okay generally the root is denoted by empty name there's no character just a single dot you will notice that if we type that huawei.com so dot com is a top level domain then huawei is a second level domain the triple w is just a host name so this is the format of a domain Okay, so when you type triple w dot huawei dot com, so as you can see from here, we have three components. Of course, that there is a dot as a root we don't type in. Then we have the com first, that is a top level. Then we have Huawei, which is a second level, and the host name. All the domain format. work in this manner now we look into this uh, DNS query mode so the DNS is a distributed system now meaning that distributed means that you cannot just depend on a centralized DNS for us to have the uh, redundancy as well the scalability so DNS is a distributed system the database of most DNS server does not have all domain uh, records. So which means that if you configure DNS, your DNS server doesn't have the whole world DNS record. So when a client query a domain from the DNS server, but the DNS server does not have the record, then the client can continue to query in the following way. There are two ways here. Either you can do a recursive or iterative. Let's look into what is a recursive and a iterative. Now the first one is a recursive. In recursive, the DNS server query other DNS server and return query result to the DNS client. So for example,
in this uh, client, the client look for www.huawei.com. It asks the first DNS server. The DNS server in this case doesn't have the Huawei. .com IP address, but it does have the DNS server that I can query. So DNS number one is going to ask DNS number two, hey DNS number two, do you know where is Huawei.com? Now DNS number two's reply saying that, hey, I know this is the IP and DNS number one is going to to reply to the DNS client. We call this as recursive. The DNS client is going to wait the answer from DNS server number one. Now the second time of a query is called interactive. The DNS server informs the DNS client of the IP address of another DNS server from which DNS client query the domain name. So now the DNS client is going to ask server one. Server one said, hey, I do not know where is uh, www.huawei.com, but I do know the server that will possibly know where is huawei.com. So it's going to return the IP address of the DNS2 IP. So step number two in the interactive is that the client now is going to query the DNS2 asking for, hey, DNS2, can you tell me where is www.huawei.com? So DNS number two, then we're going to reply. Hey, I know where is Huawei.com and this is the IP. Okay, so this is called interactive. So these are the two modes. Now, most likely if let's say you are working in the enterprise, your internal DNS server will be using a request because you are going to reply back to the client because client will not go to to every single DNS and query them. So the DNS server is the one that authorized to query the root DNS server and the root DNS server is going to tell them where to get the answer. Okay, so that's the difference between a recursive query and the iterative query.